the next chapter which we're going to deal with is theory of equations. So what is theory of equations? Now we have discussed different types of equations or the functions which we have dealt in previous sessions. So to start with we have discussed about a linear equation which was y equal to mx plus c. Then we have also discussed about quadratic equation in the recent session of the topics which was in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So etc and etc. We have different types of equations which are decided on the highest power they have. Say for example if my linear equation is y equals mx plus c my quadratic which is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c or next if it is cubic the next which comes in order if it is cubic then this is in the form ax cubed bx squared plus cx plus d then there is one common property which I identify in each of these where I identify that linear my power of the variable x is 1 and for quadratic the power of the highest power of the variable is 2 and in cubic the highest power is 3. So each of the highest powers of x decide the different types of equations. Linear the power is 1. Quadratic the highest power is 2 for cubic the highest power of 3 now what happens if I have an equation where the power is n is what we are going to discuss and this theory of discussing each of the powers in its expressions is called theory of equations it may be any equation whose power is n or x power 100 x power 1000 but for any equation we just examine the properties we examine the roots we find various other properties as we have found in quadratic equations there are two roots the roots being real and equal real and unequal or imaginary or complex so these are the different properties which we have identified in the nature of roots of different equations which we have considered similarly we are going to enter into the general form of x power n sort of equations which are called the polynomials which are going to discuss in the next session. But the study of each of these for their roots, for their connection of the roots with coefficients and various other properties comes under theory of equations to be continued with the session. Now let's start with the first topic of first content of this theory of equations which starts with polynomial. Now the whole of theory of equations is based on a polynomial. So it is very important to know what is a polynomial before we understand the further properties of theory of equations. Now as we have the word polynomial it is defined in this manner. If n is a non-negative integer, and if I have a naught, a one, a two, a i till a n are real or complex numbers. numbers then for a naught not equal to 0 it is defined that a naught x power n plus a 1 x power n minus 1 plus a 2 x power n minus 2 till a i x power n minus i till a n minus 1 x till a n is how I define the polynomial 
this then for a naught equal to 0 this is called a polynomial in x because the variable is x I call this as a polynomial in x of degree n because the highest power in this case is n therefore the degree of the polynomial is n so the definition is including all the factors here which says that if n is a non-negative integer that is it can be either positive or zero is a non-negative integer and a naught a1 a2 till ai so on and so forth till an are real or complex numbers then for a naught is not equal to zero my function f of x equals a naught x power n plus a1 x power so on and so forth is called a polynomial in x of degree n so therefore this is how we define a polynomial in general sense any expression which can be written in this form and satisfying each of these properties is called a polynomial let's see some contents here here the special property is that a naught is called each of a i or a naught a1 a2 so on till a n are called coefficients of the given polynomial the constants a naught a1 a2 till a n are called coefficients of the polynomial and a naught is called is given with the special name called leading coefficient so this has a very vital role to play because this is where i call a naught as the leading coefficient which is never zero so therefore a naught is called the leading coefficient and finally this is a special coefficient because every coefficient is connected with x but this is the only coefficient which is independent of x therefore my last coefficient which is generally denoted with a n or with degree n is called the constant coefficient or this is called the constant term now as it comes to this my a n is the constant term and each of a i as i see here i see that the general coefficient a i is said to be the coefficient of x power n minus i so a i which is called the general coefficient is nothing but the coefficient of x power n minus i is how we understand each of the properties where a naught is the leading coefficient and the leading coefficient is also called the 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 constant term is also called the absolute term absolute term so a naught is the leading coefficient and a n is called the constant term or the absolute term and a i is called the general coefficient of x power n minus i as can be identified here so this entirely makes a picture of what a polynomial is you can take many examples out here which satisfy for example if i take the polynomial p of x is root 3 x cube minus 7 i x plus 4 then this is clearly a polynomial of degree 3 in x because each of the coefficients are complex because it can be real or complex and each of them with a a naught being root 3 and my next a1 is 0 because there's no x square term and my a2 is negative 7i and my a3 is 4 and therefore each of the coefficients are derived from the given polynomial so this is a polynomial in x of degree three is how we understand the polynomials through the given definition